morning. Welcome to Unity Church Clearwater. My name is Gail, and I am a volunteer and member, and you're not. No, you are. <laughs> anyway, prayer is the heart of our Unity ministry. Prayer request forms are found in the lobby, in the prayer room down the central hallway, and may be placed in the prayer request box that you see here on the platform, in the prayer request box in the prayer room. These requests are kept in confidence and lifted up in spiritual consciousness for at least 30 days by our ministry team. Now, let us affirm divine guidance, healing, prosperity, freedom, and peace for each and every name that has been shared. As we begin our worship with the reading of today's daily word lesson at this time, please silence your cell phones, take a deep breath as we become centered. Many find God in the silence. Let us be still now for a time and help them in their quest. Self-care. I take great care of my mind, body, and spirit. Jesus taught us to love one another as ourselves. When we hear this, we may automatically think Jesus is speaking only about loving others. The truth is, Jesus asks us to love ourselves first. I am better able to care for others when I take care of myself. I honor my body temple by providing myself with good nutrition, adequate exercise, and appreciation for what I bring to the world. I read uplifting books and magazines, I speak affirmative words about myself and others, and I refuse to be pulled down by another person's pessimistic outlook. I look for and find the best in myself and in each person. In mind, body, and spirit, I take great care of myself. Luke 11:34, Your eye is the lamp of your body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body is full of light. But if it is not healthy, your body is full of darkness. And so it is. Amen.
singing house built on love. built on love and if you look around up here you will see everybody that makes up this love in this house my name is Phyllis Sabella I'm an assistant minister licensed unity teacher and a very proud member of this wonderful unity family I'd like to ask our finance manager Maria DeRee to come up and help me with announcements this morning please Maria thank you <laughs> welcome to you welcome to unity Check our reflections and e-newsletters 
for info on yoga, Tai Chi, and 12-step meetings at the Peace Cottage on the northwest corner of the church grounds. Our WINGS group, Women Inspiring New Growth Spiritually, meets in the cafe between noon and one on Tuesdays. Bring a brown bag lunch at about 11.30, enjoy the rest of the ladies, get a chance to meet everyone, and then the Reverend Phyllis DeBella is leading an inspirational discussion on Myrtle Fillmore's healing letters. WINGS always has a great time. And we do. Uh, a great class meets here on Tuesday evening through October the 6th in the cafe at 7 p.m. called A Life That Works Part 3. You don't have to have gone to the part one and two to get something out of part three. They're having a wonderful time in there, and it's a very good way to meet other people in this house built on love as well as learn more about your Unity Church. It is taught by the Reverend Dieter Randolph and Reverend Judy Telfelski. We have an awesome, really awesome, youth ministry that welcomes children of all ages during our Sunday worship service. We have two experienced child care attendants every Sunday in our nursery, and they really are looking for more babies. And Susie Forevermore, the artist who designed our creation murals, is our delightful preschool teacher. School-aged children start with a short assembly in the Peace Chapel, then go to their classrooms where dedicated teachers lead them through a lesson plan that echoes our adult workshop theme. We can always use extra classroom aids. Please see our youth ministry coordinator, prayer chaplain, Cynthia Mackey, who's right there, about that today. If you have little ones who aren't ready to try classroom experience, but are too restless for the sanctuary, enjoy the service shown on the screen, which is live streamed in our Peace Chapel. On Wednesday evenings, please join us for our peaceful meditation time from 7 to 7.30. Uh, and beginning this Wednesday, September 23rd, immediately following the uh, prayer and meditation class, Lessons in Truth class will be starting. Um, I do both of those, so uh, if you don't like me, don't come. Uh, <laughs> Is, Lessons in Truth is Unity's basic textbook along with the Bible. And uh, so this is kind of like uh, everything you want to know about Unity, but we're afraid to ask. So please come and join us. We have, it's a wonderful, uplifting time in prayer and meditation. We have a wonderful group of folks who uh, join us in prayer. Um, no, okay. Please come. <laughs> Please come. It is wonderful. I go every Wednesday, and it's a wonderful way to get you through the rest of the week. Our teens meet 6 to 7.30 Wednesdays, and they welcome new friends to join them. Teens, oh, okay, that's Wednesdays between 6 and 7.30 in the New World Room in the Youth Wing, led by Cynthia Mackey, who is our coordinator, and we also have Reverend Dieter Randolph and Jenny and Reverend Rob are back there. It's a great opportunity for our teens. Um, and Cynthia also is doing training for youth ministry. Yesterday she had a class, and we've asked her to repeat the basic information when we do our next youth ministry meeting at noon on Sunday, November 15th. Please mark your calendars. All are welcome. We're grateful for all of our wonderful volunteers here in youth ministry, the bookstore, the welcome team, the cafe, and our clean team ministry. We do not have a professional housekeeper or janitorial services, so we rely on the hands and hearts of the members of this congregation, and we, they do a fantastic job keeping it clean. Uh, join us at our next Express Saturday, which is September 26, 9 to 11. There will be donuts. Watch our e-newsletter for the dates of service Saturday and Express Saturdays, which will vary to keep your holiday weekends clear. Thank you, Maria, for helping with me with announcements. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, um, I invite our light bringers to come up. They're waving their bag. I think they were afraid I was going to forget them. <laughs> we have a very special way here of welcoming people who have come for the first time or people who have come back after being away. So if this is your very first visit to Unity, 
or if you've been away for a while and like, feel like you'd like to have a special welcome, please just put your hand up in the air and our light bringers will bring you a very special gift bag. Yay, my friends! <laughs> Please know that you that are here for the first time and those of you who are coming back, you are the most important people in this room this morning. We are blessed by your presence and we are happy that you chose to be here this morning because there's a lot of other places that you could have been and we appreciate it. There is power in this house built on love. It's in the music, it's in the scriptures, it's in the silence, and it's in the hearts as we all join in oneness. Spirit led you here. And for that, we are truly graced by your presence. Okay, let's, uh, let's start by looking at our opening statements on the screen and speak them together, please. There is only one presence and one power, everywhere and always. God, the good, omnipotent, and God is love. In our unity of purpose, we are guided by infinite wisdom, renewed by abundant life, and prospered by divine love. Let's pause for a moment of prayer. Turn inwards to the perfect peace within. The peace that lies at our very core, waiting for us to awaken and align our thoughts with our Christ spirit within. Peace, perfect peace. We let the perfect peace flow as we think of all those we hold in prayer this morning. God knows every one of them by name. We see you as God sees you, strong, wise, and prospered. We pray for Billy Midland, the father of Robin Hicks, who is beginning a healing journey. We say, God bless you. We see you as God sees you, strong. We are also mindful of the Reverend Judy Tofelsky's brother, Ed, who is at the threshold of a new adventure in his great ongoing. For these dear ones, and also for so many others in our world who are moving through powerful passages, seeking guidance, healing, abundance, freedom, and peace, we join in seeing them divinely directed and sheltered, knowing God is taking care of all. No worries, only loving thoughts of perfect peace. And so it is. Now let's remain seated as we say our Lord's Prayer together. The words will be on the screen also. <clears throat> our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we have us not. For thine is the kingdom, the glory, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now let's take a very, very deep breath slowly as we prepare ourselves for a time of meditation. As we breathe in peace, we open to the way of spirit. Aware of our divine essences, we know it is the Christ within who does the work. We uphold ourselves and others in the faith that the highest blessings are unfolding. Close your eyes as you take a deep breath, gently, deeply, just breathe, knowing that light, love, and peace fill your heart. And now, our meditation song, please join us in singing, I Am Love.
As I let go of all outer distractions or concerns of the day, I feel the sacredness in this moment. I relax in the presence of love and I reflect on the gift of God's grace. I find peace in the knowledge that grace enfolds me night and day. Centered in this truth, I see peace in every heart and in every situation. And in this quiet moment, I touch the presence of divine love and divine peace within. I hold a vision of peace, perfect peace, being expressed in a world where perfect peace reigns. I affirm love and peace in every heart. Many come to unity for an experience of peace. Let each of us be mindful of this and let our words and actions express peace to all. Peace, let it begin with me. Breathe, feel God's loving peace, perfect peace, flow throughout your entire being. Breathe in gratitude, knowing what a precious privilege it is to be alive, to breathe, to enjoy, and to love. Let go. Think of, what a, think of your faith that knowing that everything is perfect and in divine order. Just let go. Just breathe and hold a vision of peace, perfect peace being expressed in our universe. Just be, let go, and trust God in the silence of perfect peace. And so it is. Do we have a beautiful ministry team or what? <laughs> Music. Thank you. The Bible is our primary textbook in Unity, and we share scripture each Sunday. The affirmation after each reading are lyrics from the music that will be shared today. I will read the Bible passages, and then let us speak the affirmations that will be on the screen together. From John. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give it to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled or afraid. Together, perfect peace close to me. All is as it should be. And from Romans, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Together, I believe, I let it flow, and I know perfect peace. 
from Philippians. Have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer, with thanksgiving, then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Together, peace, peace. Close, close to me. me. All, All is as, as it should, should be. And our last one is from, from the Bible. <laughs> and let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called, and be thankful. Together, please. I believe I let it flow. I know perfect peace. And now some special music from Janet. Good morning. Hello? Oh, okay. Um, if you would, we're going to sing, uh, we'll sing the first verse, and then we'd really like if you would join us. Um, because we're repeating the same verses over and over again. It would be great if you could sing along with us. Okay. Perfect peace flows through me. All is as it should be. I release, I let go, and I know perfect peace. First line is perfect peace. Perfect peace flows through me, flows through me. All is as it should be, it should be. I release, I release, I let go, I let go. And I so much for helping me out, <laughs> helping us out. Um, I'm going to try this. Is this on? I'm going to try. Oh, yep. I'm going to try.
try to step away once in a while from this podium and use the handheld mic. Um, but I probably won't wander too far away because this is my first time giving the lesson here in my home church. And I want to thank each and every one of you because there is a part of everybody here in my heart with me this morning. When I came here approximately eight to ten years ago, if you had told me I would have been standing up here on a Sunday morning, I would have gone, yeah, right. At that point in my life, I wasn't even sure that I'd be standing, let alone be someplace, as, come as far as I've come. This church literally saved my life. My life has been blessed and enriched by every person I have ever met in unity. People, your perfect peace inside, your love is the heart of unity. So I want to thank you, first of all, for that. What if I told you that today was the last day of your life on earth? How would you feel about that? Would you be at perfect peace? Or would you run and grab that bucket list? So I say, okay, I didn't go here, I didn't do that, and I didn't call that person, I didn't tell that person I love them. How much can I get done in 24 hours? I think a lot of us might feel that way. Um, however, today is the day, folks. None of us know when our last day on earth is going to be. We only know that we have this moment, this time, right here, right now. So if you've got plans and dreams, after the service, I would ask you to go home, either call up someone you haven't forgiven yet, and say, I am so sorry. Forgive me, I forgive you. Or call up your daughter that you're still angry at because she forgot your birthday. Call her up. I love you. Give someone a hug. Someone that you may pass every day and just take for granted. Go home and give your loved one a hug. How many times does your loved one walk through the door and you just kind of, yeah, hey, right? Appreciate the here and the now. Today is the perfect to find your perfect peace within. Excuse me, I'll get used to these two things here. I think they're driving them crazy. Just for one moment, I would like you to look at the screen again. We have the um, background that we had on the screen up. No, yes. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to trick you, tech team. Really not trying to pull any stuff. Oh, oh, there he is. Okay, that is the picture of perfect peace. And look at the tiny lips, the little eyelashes that are like butterfly kisses, laying on his shoulder, just knowing, just knowing that they are loved. Nothing can happen to them. That, I'm going to brag, I am a Nana. That is my nine-month-old grandson, Owen. <laughs> And Owen is at the phase where perfect peace is only if he is sleeping like that. So. so as you look at that picture, I want you to think about, do you know that's the way God loves you? That's how God sees us, his beloved children. We are each a perfect child of God. Everyone in this room is loved by God. And God, as reflected in our faces, in our hearts, is truth. Do you feel perfect peace this morning? Or are your thoughts still on that so-and-so who cut you off in traffic on the way here? Or stuck in yesterday on an argument you may have had with someone over something silly? Are your thoughts bouncing around in your head in a state of chaos, jumping from yesterday to tomorrow, and maybe even back five years from today? Stop. 
stop thinking. If you could just bear with me for a minute. I want you to imagine you have a basket on your lap. In that basket, I want you to place every thought, busy thought, that you brought into this room this morning. The traffic, the argument, the, um, the pen that fell off your dress on your way in, whatever happened, put it inside that basket. Physically, picture yourself putting it in the basket and place the basket at your feet. Done that in your head? OK, I'm going to ask you to trust me for just a little bit more. And close your eyes. Imagine that you are peaceful, perfectly peaceful. Go in your mind to wherever you feel peaceful, whether it's the lake, the beach, under a tree, sitting in your living room, wherever it is that is that spot where you feel peaceful, and turn your thoughts inward. Focus on your inner Christ. Look deeply within. See only the light as you consciously release all other thoughts out of your vision. See the light of spirit. Feel the peace of spirit. Let go of everything except perfect peace in the light. Use your heart to hear the words from the music this morning. Perfect peace close to me. Perfect peace. All is as it should be. Slowly open your eyes and come back to us this morning. Do you feel spirit's peace in your heart now? Do you feel more calm? tranquil, serene? Do you feel the peace from everyone around you, the grace of God's peace surrounding us? I want you to quietly look around the room at a couple of faces that are sitting near you. Do you feel that peace radiating from that person or persons? And it is. I can feel it up here. I can feel peace radiating, vibrating in my heart. God's peace is eternally within our heart. And when the restless activity of your mind slows down, when your thoughts stop rushing like waves on a windy day, then you will know perfect peace. Our, one of our co-founders, Charles Fillmore, states in Keep a True Lent, I praise God for the peace of my own higher self. I rejoice, and I am glad in the possession of the holy city within. With my inner vision, I see the gates open wide, and holy peace pervades my consciousness. True and lasting inner peace can never be found in the external. It can only be found within. And once we get in touch with that inner peace and nurture it, it radiates out to our world. I am peace. God is peace. Peace begins with peace in my heart to the world. Okay, that's all well said and done, but what does it mean to you? Do you ever have those days where, I'm probably driving this crazy, do you ever have those days where you, everything, I'm, we live in a very chaotic world. Bells ringing, phones flashing, my husband's phone's got this, some kind of guitar strumming on it, drives me crazy. There's always noise and lights and traffic and sound and, you know, bada boom, horns, whatever. Do you ever get to that point during your day where you go, oh, God, I need some peace of quiet? 
Well, what if you did it this way? Oh, God, I know you're there. Show me the way. You don't have to come to church to find peace. You don't have to go anywhere special. You can take yourself apart wherever you are. If you're at the office, go to the bathroom. If you're uh, in your car, just pull over if you want. Wherever you are, you can find a little space for just a few moments of quiet time with God. We like to call that meditation, and sometimes meditation is really quick, like I just said. You get to that point and you go, breathe. Yes, God, I know I have peace in my heart. Please show me the way, and thank you, God. Thank you. You can start your day over at any time that way. Philippians 4, 7 says, It is the peace of God which transcends all understanding. I'm going to read that again. It is the peace of God which transcends all understanding. Eric Butterworth, one of our um, unity ministers and writers that we study, he had an idea about how to find perfect peace, and I'd like to share that with you this morning. He had an idea about developing your own personal prayer book. So what he suggested was that you keep a notebook, a very small notebook with you, and a pen or pencil, or what, a crayon, whatever. And when you encounter a challenge, a problem, an error, whatever it is that you encounter that kind of stumbles you on your day, he asks you to stop and write down the description of the problem and how it's affecting you. For example, I could write down, I am crabby because I overslept and I was late to work. That's just what happened. That's how I felt. I felt crabby. That was what happened. Or, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Now, after you do that, the next thing you do is write down how you feel it ought to be, such as, I ought to be happy. I ought to be in touch with the healing power within me. I ought to know better. I'm unity. Whatever it is, write down how you feel it ought to be. Butterworth then states, to take the ought one step further and write your problem as an I am statement, such as, and write it as if it is already true. I am expressing the healing power of God's presence. I am happy. I am joyful. I am one with the divine flow of love in my life. I am peaceful. I radiate peace. Butterworth said you can use this as your own personal prayer book, but it's your own because it comes from within you. He says you might want to call it your ought to be -ography. I like that title. Ought to be -ography. and have a nice dinner, or sit down and talk to a friend without being on the phone with another friend. Have you noticed that's the way our world goes these days? I mean, we have wonderful technology, I realize that, and if we didn't have technology, texting and FaceTime, I might never get to see my little grandson, so I do appreciate it. But how many times have you sat down in a restaurant and looked over and you see the table over here, the man and a woman sitting there, and they're both on their phone, no, 
Not even, you know, maybe they'll take a bite of their dinner. Are they enjoying their dinner? Why did they go together? I mean, I don't need somebody sitting there if I'm going to text somebody else. That, and, you know, and we've lost touch. When's the last time you had a nice dinner with somebody or a nice lunch or brunch and you just sat down? You left your phone in the car. You sat down and you looked at one another. You talked to one another and you tasted the food you were eating. When's the last time you did that? How many of us run through a drive through grab whatever it is, and eat it, and don't even know what we ate? That's not living. That's not peaceful. We have to create our peaceful surroundings to be able to get in touch with that peace within ourselves. And that peace is always there. You don't have to go anywhere else to look for it. It's inside you. God's peace is just waiting for you to awaken and call it forth and use it because you are God's beloved child. If you don't remember anything I said this morning, Please remember this. I'm going to use the word behold, like I did last week for Judy. The key to perfect peace. It can only be found within. When you go into the silence, when you meditate wherever you are for just a few moments and express gratitude, listen for those gentle whispers in your heart. You can be assured inner peace will manifest when you look within to your own spiritual consciousness. And when your heart is radiating vibrations of peace out into our world, the outer world can feel those vibrations and another heart starts vibrating in peace. We can have peace in this chaotic world, but it starts with each and every one of us. I am peace. Peace begins with me. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, Remain in your hearts today and always. And please remember, I have a part of each and every one of you and the peace of my heart because I would have never, ever had the life I have today had it not been for my Unity family. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think I finished it a little early, so I may drag this next part out a little bit. Uh, sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, our closing prayer is, <sighs> deep breath. I believe that the Holy Spirit has perfect peace for me, no matter what is going on in the outer. Perfect peace. No more anxiety. No more argument. No more violence in our world. Spirit leads me, Spirit guides me, and Spirit walks beside me. Together, the perfect peace within each of us will vibrate out into the universe today. Perfect peace prevails. I see my life and my world with new eyes and fresh vision of perfect peace. Thank you, God, for giving each of us the choice to align our hearts with you in perfect peace. Amen. And now the offertory. (laughs) 
Let us take our gifts of love and substance. We consecrate and dedicate it. Oh, I'm sorry, wrong one. Take our gifts of love and substance into our hands, blessing our gifts with these words. Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, Father, Mother, God. Good morning, everyone. Can co-create 
Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Music Ministry. I don't know if you've been anywhere else lately in a church, but if you have, you know that we have one of the best music ministries in this country right here with us. Let's consecrate our offering. We bless this offering of love and substance. We consecrate and dedicate it to the glory of God and to the good of all humankind. We are praising and blessing our basket in store as the Christ's might increases our good evermore. Amen. At this time, I'd like to thank our internet congregation for joining us. We are very grateful for you. You do make a difference in our church family, and you do, and we can feel you with us here in the morning. I have a lot of people to thank um, today, um, but I especially I want to start with our senior minister, Letty Hamnick. I have to say a very, very heartfelt thank to Letty. She is not in. She might be now. She wasn't in the area when I came in because she knew I'd be nervous if she were in the area. <laughs> So she, she's around, but she's hiding from me. Um, anyway, I appreciate that. And, but she's been here up on this platform with me in my heart. There's no way I could have accomplished the things I've accomplished without Letty's encouragement, support, love, friendship. She's my truth teacher, my spiritual sister. And Letty, thank you for believing in me. Um, I'd also like that there's a lot of people out here that I want to thank. I want to thank our tech team for always uh, making things wonderful for us down here. All the volunteers, the light bringers, the welcomers, the greeters, um, the cafe people. Please, if you're new or even if you're not new and you feel like talking to somebody, we have coffee and donuts in the cafe and volunteers who are in there to welcome you. Um, I said, if there's anybody else I forgot to thank. I do want to thank two special people who came all the way from Palm Harbor down this morning to just to see me. I don't want to embarrass them, but um, the point that they came all the way down here just because I was talking and I haven't seen them for a long time, I really do want to acknowledge their presence. Peggy and Pam, bless you. Okay, before we call in the youth ministry, I want to remind you, remember the basket I told you to put at your feet with all your cares and woes and worries in it? You can either pick it up and take it home with you, or you can kick it under the seat and leave it here. Okay, as we bring this sacred time to a close, oh, well, I guess I have to call in the youth first, don't I? Okay, come on in, youth. This little light of mine of unity. Aren't they beautiful? All right, I believe they are going to uh, lead us in our prayer for protection. So please rise. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well.
something wonderful Something wonderful Is happening to me Right here, right now Oh, there's love inside We can love each other Something wonderful <laughs> when you start playing birthdays, you, know, you get three people have the same birthday on the same night, and you gotta remember all the names, play the birthday, and say it, sing it to everyone. It's crazy. Then, and, so what's your birthday? <laughs> See you later, man. Good job. Good job. No. I, I, I think I drove him crazy with the two microphones back. It's all good.